Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Suprema Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract market, including large hotel groups and small family-run business. No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. Welcome to the Irish in the UK. This week we'll be meeting Patrick Morrison, Michelle O'Leary and their group of young musicians from Camalthus Kyoto Chiheran. We'll also be at the Liverpool Irish Centre for a great night of music, song and dance with Seamus Fitzsimons, Cathy Cathy and the George Ferguson School of Irish Dancing. But first up, Mary Daly is very well known in Manchester. She was born in Foxwood in County Mayo and has lived in Manchester for a very long time. And recently she celebrated her 80th birthday party and people came from near and far to be with her on her special night. Near or and more In the county Galway One pleasant evening in the month of May I spied a damsel She was young and handsome Her beauty fairly took My breath away She wore no jewels no costly diamonds No paint nor powder No none at all She wore a bonnet Mary, it's a wonderful night here tonight. Such a big crowd. You've got so many family, friends and people here. I have. And thank you everybody for coming. All my friends, some of the friends are from, from when I was young, back in the 60s and back in the late 50s. And I have my daughter and her, and her husband and the kids, they all came tonight from Dubai, here during the week. But all my friends, they're all so special to me. Every, you know, there's somebody out there, Rose Regan, and somebody I've been friends with all my life for the past nearly 30 years. And Mary Porter and the Mordens, uh, and especially all my family, my, you know, my, all my kids, they've been absolutely great. I didn't expect anything like this. I have one grandson, that's Sean's little boy, and he's the love of my life. And fa nine girls, and they are all lovely too. They're fabulous kids. I couldn't, don't think I could get by without them. They bring me so much happiness. It's a dream come true Standing here sharing time with you it's not so very long ago I thought I'd never see another show But then I asked my Lord To give me strength to face the world again 
I pray each night don't let the music end It's what I love, it's been my life, it's what I do Give me hope and make my dream come true Now, Mary, you come from Foxford in County Mayo, but what was it like growing up in Foxford 80 years ago? We had nothing, but we had nothing. We, I grew up on a farm, but it was a happy home. I had a lovely mother and father, you know, and they were absolutely great. They were lovely parents. And I worked in a shop, and then I came to England when I was 17. I came to London, and from London I came to Manchester. And then I met my husband uh, in 1957. The year I came, I met him in the Sheriffs, and uh, I was, we got married in 1960. And then my first daughter was born in 1962, and the, the rest followed. And, and sadly, your husband passed away. 21 years, the love of my life, really. He was from Shum, he was from Kilconnelly, and a, again, a lovely man and a great husband and father. Now, tell me a little bit about the Foxford Mill and the big gate going into the Foxford Mill. I'll tell you, Martin, about the Foxford Mill. I worked in the convent, and we used to sneak out at night, and we'd go to a dance someplace, and one night we were locked out. So I was coming up from Bellinar on a bike. This was at four o'clock in the morning, and I jumped the mill gate and I hid behind the grotto when the nuns went to mass, and then went in the next morning to mass as if nothing happened. Oh, look at happy times, Mary. Happy, oh, we had some great times in Foxford. The people around Foxford were lovely, people were lovely. And from Galway, the people were lovely too. Do you still get back to Foxford? I do, I do. I was home in August and the kids, they all came really and they had a surprise party for me there. I didn't know anything about it until I got outside the house and I seen all the cars and it was, again, it was lovely. It was lovely and I have great kids, I must admit. Well, you're very lucky, Mary, to have your family around you and so many friends here tonight. You're a very popular lady. Thank you to all my friends and all my family and anybody that's come and I have really enjoyed it. I have it's been a lovely, lovely night. To give me strength to face the world again. I pray each night don't let the music again. It's what I love, it's been my life, it's what I do. Give me hope and make my dream come true. Julie, tell me a little bit about Mum. What was it like when you were a, a young girl growing up? Was she a strict lady? Oh, she was very strict. She was very strict. But, you know, that stood me in good stead for as I grew up and into adult life. So that discipline that they really featured at home really helped me. She was very strict, but there was always a sense of humour. And what I really remember was being allowed to be responsible, which is actually missing in a lot of families at home now where everybody does everything for the children but we were allowed you know we had our responsibilities as as a family of five we had things to do so no she was very strict but we had shared um, values at home and shared roles at home which really was very helpful and you lost your dad god rest him at a very young age we did he was 59 and um, it was really hard for all of us. I mean, obviously it was harder for mum because she lost her partner in life and she lost her best friend. I think, thankfully, because of all the memories that they created, the two of them, that really helped us. Tell me, what was it like going back to Ireland on the summer holidays? The one thing that I really remember, well, well two things. As we would go back to Ireland, there's five of us, and we would pay for four tickets, yeah. four children and two adults. So Christopher, the youngest, was always hit under and the blanket. It was like, get down, Christopher. And that was always really exciting because, you know, we knew it was wrong. And then as we arrived in Dublin and driving down to Galway, and, you know, mom and dad, they would say, wake up, there's, I don't know, there's a badger in the road. There's something else in the road. And of course, coming from here, from the inner city of Manchester, yeah. we didn't see those animals. So that was really exciting. And then when we arrived at Granny Daly's house or Granny Sheeran's house, 
um, they would just open the door of the cottage and off you go now. And we would go out in the fields and we would come back in the evening only to eat. Or we'd go in the bog and we'd collect the turf. Or we'd have fights where um, in mum's house uh, you had to go to the well to collect the water and we'd fight. But of course, because I'm the eldest, I would always be the one that got to choose who came with me. So lots of incredible memories. Waltzing through Ireland, through Ireland with you Holding you in my arms, that's what I want to do We'll see all the places and story and song And be so in love as we waltz along We'll take in the beauty of this famous land Go fishing and walking along by the strand We'll be singing and dancing, all this we will do While waltzing through Ireland, through Ireland with you Now tonight's a special night of course for you all But no, extra special for your mum Great to see her here and a big smile on her face. And we've seen her out dancing there with you actually earlier on. Yeah, She's yeah. a great dancer. She is a great dancer. And they, you know, mum and dad, they both taught us all to waltz and they taught us to jive. A really special night. But I think what's so special about this evening is the different generations that are here. You know, that is my mum's friends who their children wanted to come and say happy birthday to my mum which actually is quite unique. Lots of the locals here tonight are telling me they've never seen a crowd in here in the English Martyrs for a long, long time so big. I know, and again, that's as we were growing up, our house was always open. There was just an open house, which I think is what this was about this evening. It's just an extension of our home and how we grew up. It's been lovely to speak to you tonight. It's lovely to find out a little bit more about your family because your mum is a very special lady to us and to lots of people in Manchester. And it's great to see you tonight and join us. Happy Well done to Mary, she's a fantastic lady and many congratulations to her and it was great to see so many of her friends and family there supporting her on her special occasion. Now we're going to take a little break, when we return we'll be at the Liverpool Irish Centre and we'll be having some music from Camalthus called Tulchihera. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Supreme Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract market, including large hotel groups and small family-run business. No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. La La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience.
The Warrington Irish Club, 83 Orford Lane, Warrington. A friendly and welcoming club, keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night. Tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports shown on the big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and crafts. Pop in for a friendly welcome and to book your event at the Warrington Irish Club, give Frank a call. IJK's Scrap Metal, Manchester. We provide payment for scrap metal, removal and disposal of cars and abandoned vehicles. A Weybridge facility, authorised treatment facility, recycling and waste management. Full compliance with all legal requirements. IJK Scrap Metal, Manchester. A friendly, professional and reliable service. The Dolphin Hotel and Mulhern Bar, situated in the heart of Cross Malina, is now under new ownership. Mayo's leading destination for food, beverages and accommodation. Food served from 9am till 9pm. Sample fresh local produce on our breakfast, lunch and a la carte menu. Or why not relax in Mulhern's Bar? We cater for weddings, parties and various functions. Stay with us in one of our beautiful ensuite rooms. You will be greeted with a smile from Mary and Pat Mulhern at the Dolphin and Mulhern's Bar, Cross Malina, County Mayo. Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Welcome back. Now we all love to see young children playing Irish traditional music and of course Camalthus Cold Tulcha here and does a wonderful job throughout the UK in promoting Irish music. But recently we went along to meet Patrick Morrison, Michelle O'Leary and their young group at the Irish World Heritage Centre in Manchester. Cultus this week, after over 60 years of working for the Irish community promoting Irish music in Britain, has just become a registered charity. Uh, so it's good that our recognition for not only for teaching music and passing it on, but also the community work we do and on building the community has been recognised in that way. And of course, this is vitally important for the lifeline of Cultus. Absolutely. Uh, Cultus in Britain is it's a voluntary organisation, it relies on uh, donations, it relies on funding. Uh, so now with uh, charity status, it means it will open up new avenues for us um, in terms of looking for additional funding to be able to keep going and passing on the tradition to more people. And of course you do wonderful work, of course, teaching the music all around the country. So yes, branches up and down the country, um, 25 branches from Glasgow all the way down to Hastings, all teaching uh, traditional music, singing, dancing on a weekly basis with classes uh, for young people, classes for older people, uh, working with care homes and dementia groups, a whole range and every generation learning Irish music. 2019 has been a busy year. We've had a lot of big events on, uh, including the Old Britain Flaar, which was the biggest yet, uh, with 7,000 people there in Kirby Lonsdale. Uh, and we've got uh, another few big events now planned for next year, continuing to grow. Now, Patrick, tell me a little bit about your job and how you're involved with Coltus. Uh, so I'm one of the four project officers based here in Britain. Uh, we're full-time for Coulters and we're here to support the voluntary uh, work done by the membership, by the officers, uh, in supporting them in looking for funding, looking at events and really developing the organisation across Britain. Uh, but in addition to that, I have a further role in that I'm uh, the staff member who's responsible for looking after or building links with Coulters branches and Coulters activity around the world. So Coulters today has branches in 18 different countries and four different continents. So uh, there's Irish music played in Japan, in South America, North America, Australia. And it's part of my role is to, is to be the link with them back to Coulters in Dublin. Patrick, it's lovely to meet you tonight and good luck in the future.
you put in a lot of time, of course, teaching the music here at the Irish World Heritage Centre. But tell me a little bit about the group that you've got here tonight. Um, this is what we call the Thursday night group, which is usually the children, or like under 16, although we have got some older, slightly older um, children that come at 17. And of course, Michelle, you've got some of the adults joining you here as well tonight. That's right. We have a class on a Monday night for the adults. Um, it's like a community cultures class. And as you can see, as you've noticed, there's already a few that are already down and everyone's getting better. Now, there's a lot of different children here uh, playing different instruments. Do you give uh, individual classes to them? It's not so much individual classes, but um, all instruments are welcome. And um, if I can't cater for them, we'll so sort somebody out that will. Of course, we heard from Patrick uh, earlier on, you know, how important Coltis is to, uh, you know, keeping the Irish music alive here in the UK, but not just alive in the UK. It's really going strong now throughout the world. That's right, it's very much um, a worldwide organisation now and um, we have branches extended you know, into South America, Japan, all over, you know, like mainland New Europe as well. Well, you're doing a great job here teaching all the youngsters and the adults as well and keeping Irish music alive here in the city. Thank you very much, Martin. <laughs> sure there are some young budding stars among that group. Now we are off to the Liverpool Irish Centre to meet Seamus Fitzsimons, Cathy Carter and we're going to have wonderful Irish dancing from the George Ferguson School of Irish Dancing. Near Van Bridgetown in the county down one morning last year line On the bar and green came a sweet Colleen and smiled and she passed me by She looked so neat from her two bare feet to the sheen up in her brown hair I'd a coax and I'd try to shake myself to make sure I'd stand in there From Banshee Bay up to there, okay, I'm going to double it Seamus, a special night for you tonight at the Liverpool Irish Centre It is, Martin, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, it'll be a great night, yeah It's my first time in Liverpool, so uh, fingers crossed uh, they take to me music and invite me back. And Liverpool reminds me so much of uh, where my parents were from, which was Dublin. Uh, the humour of Liverpool is just fantastic. They're, they're the sort of the earth. Same as Manchester people, I must admit. There's a lot of Irish in Manchester. You specialise in songwriting, really, don't you? Of course, uh, you had a, a great hit with Julie Healy and uh, Back to Glen and that, that song uh, was number one in Ireland. And it's gone back in the charts again. It's number 22, I think it is, I believe. Yeah, so I'm really pleased about that. And I believe you're working on a new album. I am. Um, it's due to be released. I'm over in Waterford on the 3rd of April uh, in Dooley's Hotel. Releasing my new album, yeah, so all my own self pen songs. So there's a few guest singers coming, Michelle Murphy, Julie Healy's coming down from Galway, so uh, there's a few to be named yet. Now tell me, what are you going to be singing for us tonight? Uh, most of my own stuff, uh, and a few nice up tempo numbers like The County Down, Star of the County Down, The Wild Rover, the usual stuff, and a lot of my own stuff. And a Christmas release I've got coming out in a couple of weeks, Irish Christmas. I'll be doing that tonight as well, live. And a merry Irish Christmas time to you. Here comes Santa, all dressed in green. Full of mince pies and old pochi. Bearing gifts with love so true. Guinness for me and Jameson's for you. I'm originally born in Liverpool, but I've got Irish heritage in my family from both sides. So I've really got into the Irish music scene uh, through listening to my dad, putting records on over the years. Um, and we're a musical family as well. I perform in mainly, probably nearly all the Irish bars around the city centre and also the Cavern Club in Liverpool as well. Yeah. Now, of course, everybody knows the Cavern Club. It's so famous for, of course, the four boys, the Beatles. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to play there. Um, and you even, you know, put the sly Irish song in, especially when the Irish stag lads are over or the football's on. So it's, it's always a pleasure and absolute privilege to play there on that stage. 
Now, I know that you're looking to take, you know, your, your performance and your act around the UK. Yeah, that's correct. We want to use this night as a platform to move forward um, and open it up to other Irish centres and other community centres to have create more Irish country evenings because I don't think there's enough in the North West. I do a lot of cover work, to be honest. I do write my own music as well from time to time when I can fit that in. But I do anything from Foster and Allen, Daniel O'Donnell, right back to Finbar Fury. Um, but there's so many, so many songs that I try and fit in there. Uh, Christy Moore, right up to the modern day Whistling Donkeys as well. And of course we had a lovely night here at the Ferguson School of Dancing earlier on as well. Yeah, they they were absolutely amazing. They've come down, volunteered to, to do this and open up the night for us with, with all the girls um, performing absolutely amazing. And I'm going to 100% get my little girl involved in that because that's inspired me to do that. I love you. George, tell me a little bit about uh, your School of Irish Dancing. Um, we've been going for about 40 years now in Liverpool and we have three different nights. We do Monday, Wednesday and Thursday in different parts of the city. So we try and cover all aspects of the city. We do lots of different types of work, like we do display work, we do exhibitions. Um, but we don't do the main fashions anymore. We've sort of opted out of that. We do our own little thing and do quite well at it, really. And congratulations on going for 40 years. My, my God, that's, that's a great achievement. I'm sure you've had lots of champions and different dancers go through your ranks. Yeah, we have. We are very fortunate that we've managed to keep the tradition going of a high standard of uh, dancing in Liverpool. Now, tell me a little bit about your own dancing career. And I know that 1972 was a special year for you. Well, I started dancing way back in, in Coventry, where I was born and brought up. My mum sneaked two and sixpence to the dance teacher's mother and I got a lesson that I didn't anticipate. I went on and I did quite well in the local fashions and stuff like that. Eventually ended up, luckily enough, as world champion in 1972 uh, at the Mansion House in Dublin, which was a great honor and uh, it's something which spurred me on to want to go and teach. And uh, 40 years later, after having passed my dance teacher's exam, I'm still keen and enthusiastic and still turning out. Now, if people want to come and dance and learn with you, how can they contact you? Best idea is to get us on uh, Facebook, the George Ferguson School of Irish Dance. Well done to them all at the Liverpool Irish Centre. We had a great night's fun with them. Now that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Don't forget Henry McGlade is back next Thursday evening with his show at 7 o'clock and we are here at 7.30 with the Irish in the UK. Until then, take good care of yourselves.